Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Good evening, everyone, and this is Shanalee Charbonneau, your radio host for this evening. I have very talented author Kevin Bowser with me this evening. How are you doing this evening, Kevin? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So um, you started with your authorship purchasing a book by the name of a leadership book. Isn't that correct? Called Moving from Vision to Action. And this correct. was kind of the start of, of Kevin Bowser, the author, if you will. Could you talk a little bit about what started your authorship and um, how you kind of moved into uh, kind of you know, lending your intelligence to the world. I'd be happy to. So this is, uh, this is my first book, and this actually came out of some work I was doing many years ago, uh, doing some nonprofit work, working with, uh, with leadership boards. And what I found was a lot of times in, in the nonprofit space, these organizations are absolutely outstanding at visionary thinking and, and visionary planning but they they sort of if we can talk openly here they sort of fail miserably at the execution of the of the strategy or of the vision and so uh, this book came out of uh, some work that a uh, a young military officer a friend of mine uh, at the time he was captain david g woods uh, he and i worked together and we did uh, we did some work around uh, how to restructure a leadership team and right really how to help a leader at the time who was very visionary but was not very tactical how to help him and his board move from from the from the vision part and and move into action move into actually executing the vision that that uh, that leader had for that organization interesting so what what drove you what part of your life drove you to start to notice that leaders have um, kind of a challenge at taking you know projects that they want to do into and, and that's I think that's for everybody I mean we want to show more leadership qualities and we want to take all these great ideas we have but as you know that that process from from actually completing something and seeing it to fruition you know what what in your previous life gave you such great knowledge that we all desire to have oh wow i wish it was great knowledge i don't know that i have great knowledge but i do have um intuition i have perception i'm able to see things sometimes quicker than somebody else uh and 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 many times i see things kind of going off the rails before they're fully off the rails. And, and there's a part of me inside that wants to get that project, get that thing, get that organization back onto the rails, maybe before everyone else on the, on the train sees that it's going off the rails. And so I, I think uh, like a lot of leaders, it's born either out of opportunity or out of frustration, mm -hmm. right? So I had a situation where I had both opportunity and frustration. So we, we were frustrated with, with where things were going, and we had an opportunity from an older leader that said, hey, you two young bucks, you think you're so smart, you, you, you go figure this out, you go figure out what we need to do. And, and we did. We, I guess we were at that point so young, we didn't, we didn't know we weren't supposed to be able to come up with an idea that would, that would maybe work. <laughs> and so we had, we had the frustration, and we had the opportunity to, to try something new. And I think that's... Uh, after seeing that it was going wrong, and, and not wrong in an evil sense, but just wrong in an ineffective sense, and seeing that it was going wrong, we said, okay, what can we do to, to bring this, this ship back around or move, get this train back onto the rails? And uh, this book right here was an attempt to do that, was to take organizations from the high level, from the visionary, and move them into strategy and then into tactics and then into the day-to-day -day things you gotta do to execute the strategy. So if you could give somebody advice, let's say, you know, they're, they're in their career, they're watching this and, um, you know, maybe they're thinking of a personal project or challenge that they want to do, or maybe they're thinking about a challenge at work they'd like to, um, you know, undertake or, or maybe be seen with more leadership qualities or somebody who could actually follow through with, um, you know, something that's majorly important with the company. 
what, what would you tell people for good advice, whether their project might be small, it could be big to them, but it may sure. be a, a huge project within an organization or, an, or a small project or a huge project in their personal life. What could you tell them to kind of understand what, to, what are the next steps and what your book helps you do, what your book helps you see and maybe change and morph as you read your book? Okay, so I, I, I think the thing to do is just to try, right? It's just to try. Yeah. Sometimes we get so paralyzed by the fear of what might happen. One of the things that uh, in my sort of my day job, one of the things we're forced to do on a regular basis is, is look at situations that happen and say, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? And if, you, and if you're running a project, and it's not a life or death project, right? If you, if you make a mistake, a city block's not going to blow up, okay? <laughs> it's a, you know, you might miss a deadline. You might run a little over budget. But what's the worst thing that can happen? And after you've analyzed that, then you sort of know what your parameters are, what you could do to try to help to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I think a lot of times we get, we get paralyzed by the fear of trying something new or trying something at all. It's, it's easier to sit back and point out, and here's where the perception and the intuition can bite you. Sometimes it's easier to sit back and say, you know, that person over there is not doing a good job. Well, that doesn't help anybody. Let's go over to that person and say, hey, what can we do together? How can, how can, what can I do to help you to be successful in your project? And they just may say, hey, if you'll take this piece right here and run with it, then I can focus on this other piece. And, and, and we, get a, we get a win, we get a success out of that. So you obviously are a very motivational person and, um, and very inspirational. I mean, we've already spoken on the phone and just talking to you and seeing you face to face. You know, what, can you tell me about, you know, your books get very high reviews. Could you tell me about maybe a story or uh, something that you changed somebody's life and, and what that story was potentially? Hmm. I don't... <laughs> I don't know that I've changed uh, too many, too many people's lives. I, I you know, I, I know mine has been changed by some of the things that I've done, by some of the opportunities that I've had, some of the people that have been uh, very influential in my life. I, I'll just give you a quick, a quick example. I was very young uh, when I was elected to my first uh, uh, nonprofit board. I think I was 22 at the time. And uh, I, I was elected to this board and uh, I showed up at the first board meeting and, you know, it sort of looked like uh, a poster for AARP, right? I mean, I, I was clearly the youngest person in the room and uh, I, knew, I knew most of the people that were on the board and some of them I knew sort of better than, than others. One of them that I happened to know pr probably better than the other ones was uh, a guy that owned a Firestone store. He was my mechanic and... Uh, I had a lemon of a car. I didn't know it at the time, but I did. And uh, so I knew him. And so I sat down next to him at the very first board meeting and I watched what he did. And I began to model what he did. And every time I, I went to his uh, Firestone store, which was frequent because of this car, I would sit down with him. And I'd say, help, what, help me help understand this. What, what were you trying to do in this situation? What could I have done different in that situation that would maybe brought brought about a different uh, outcome. And so a guy like, uh, like him, his name was Bill Searcy. I'll never forget him. He, he was just a tremendous um, in, uh, influence on, on my life as a 22 year old kid serving on a board for the very first time. Wow. wow. Well, I, I believe that you've been, you've touched many people <laughs> and, and I think it's, well, I hope so. Yes. And your speaking engagements and, and, you know, sometimes it, it takes a moment for somebody to have the nerve to approach you. So I'll, I'll be with, I'll be there for you when, when that happens and I want a phone call. Okay. Cause I, I think it. it's a really powerful story. So you, you continue your authorship um, and we won't get to the last book yet, but one of them is emotionally intelligent leaders can you talk a little bit about that book and the purpose of that book kind of going on this great leadership and, and moving vision to action uh, uh, genre, if you will? Sure. That was, uh, that was sort of a bridge between, between the, the vision to action book and then, and then uh, sort of the latest book. Uh, the one that you're speaking to is a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's kind of an ebook only. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, one of the pieces of advice I got from my publisher a while back was to 
to practice what you want to say in a in a in sort of a public format so that you start to get some feedback from people. So basically that book was just a collection of, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15 articles that I'd written. I edited them and, and kind of made them flow together a little bit better. But it was ideas that I was trying out uh, to think, uh, how would that play to an audience? How would that play to a, a young emerging leader? How would that play to a leader who had a lot of experience but was really struggling? Or how does that play to someone that desperately wants to be a leader, but nobody will let him? And so he's got to lead or she's got to lead from the second chair of the orchestra, right? So that book was, uh, was a kind of a try it out and see how, see how the audience would respond uh, to some of those concepts that ultimately then made it into um, the emotionally agile leader. And, and some of the concepts that I was testing was some of this emotional intelligence and what does that mean? How does that play out uh, it, from a leadership perspective? Now, do you see, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. And <laughs> <laughs> do you see, for instance, you know, where in it, it could be a company, it could, um, you know, obviously respect to both parties, it could be in government, but where do you see that emotional intelligence kind of uh, faltering and how could that improve? Can you think of a good example of, of maybe an instance where you thought, oh, if if they if their emotional intelligence was a little bit more intact, you know, it it could help everybody in the long run. Have sure. you, I'm sure you feel this feeling every day, so I'm sure you're just trying to find the best one. <laughs> Absolutely, and and you know, you did serve that one up across the plate, but I'm going to let it go by. I'm going to I'm going to take a called <laughs> strike and let it go. But here's what I will say: the, the underlying or the fundamental thing that you've got to get a handle on if you're going to be emotionally intelligent is okay. self-awareness, right? And I see a dramatic lack of self-awareness in society today. Yeah. Um, we live in an entitled society and entitled people don't see themselves the way other people see them. They see themselves as an entitled being and therefore you must do everything you can to meet my needs. Um, you know, so I, I, the, the, the fundamental, the undergirding principle of emotional intelligence is first of all, is self-awareness. Am I aware of myself? And we all know how to be self-aware when we want to be. Think back when you were dating, right? Mm -hmm. One of the first thing, and every guy knows this for a fact, the first thing you do before you get out of the car to go pick the girl up is you, is you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, <sighs> right? You, 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 you see if you've got bad breath. Right? <laughs> that's a self-awareness, right? That's, that's fundamental self-awareness that you know how to do if you're properly motivated. And when we're on the pursuit, when we're in a dating situation, we are motivated. And mm -hmm. so we know how to be self-aware when we want to. But what I think is desperately needed is the ability to remain self-aware and to cultivate an ongoing self-awareness such that almost it flows naturally from us as opposed to being something that we have to think real hard and focus on and concentrate on. I think that's phenomenal. I, I, you know, the, the power of self-awareness um, is, is something that I don't think, not only are we not being self-aware, but I think the, the, the realization of how powerful that can be. And, um, you know, my, my, uh, I've got a very good friend, my husband has a friend and you love being around him because he is so self-aware, you know, it uh -huh. doesn't matter if it's pulling out the chair or, you know, helping you with something, he is always there for you. And, and you want to be around those people. You, you want to be in their environment because whether you think it's graciousness or politeness or consistency, it really is self-awareness. So I can totally respect them and honor what you're saying there. And, and I think it would be very helpful for us in all avenues since you let that ball go by. <laughs> I, I did. Well, because, and to, to your point about your, your, your husband's friend, right? What flows out of self-awareness is the self-management, right? I'm aware, now I know what to do to make a better, a, a better version of me, Absolutely. right? And then what flows out of that then becomes the, the social awareness. I'm aware of you and how you're responding. And then, I try to, and then I try to manage that and manage our interaction so that it's as beneficial to you as it is to me. Those just, they just flow one to the other. 
Well, Kevin, let's let's leave that wonderful positive note there. We're going to continue on this uh, uh, experience on self awareness and acting in your own life, uh, whether it's professional or personal. Uh, again, very talented author Kevin Bowser. Um, thank you so much. We'll cut for a break. Hi, Brakefield and Berkey here, award-winning authors for the Techno Thrillers books. The Enigma book series. Technology, today's weapon of choice, the cyber good guys versus the cyber bad guys. We invite you to join our website, theenigmaseries.com, where you will get sample chapters, sample audibles, book trailers, and you can sign up for our mailing list. The books are available in ebook, paperback, and audible. Thank you. Love to read? Love to meet authors in person? Then check out bookfestival.network to find a book festival in your region of Texas. We are adding book festival events throughout the year, so sign up to get notices and even a coupon towards purchase of a Texas author's book. Sign up at bookfestival.network. I am Grace Allison Blair, an award-winning author, motivational speaker, and modern mystic. I have combined spiritual and psychological principles in my nonfiction self-help books under Grace Allison and fiction books under Grace Blair. Go to modernmysticmedia.com to find Do You Have a Dream? Five Keys to Realize Your Dream and my novel Einstein's Compass, a YA time traveler adventure. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Good evening. This is Shanley Charbonneau, awarded author, model, and speaker. But most importantly, your radio show host for this evening with an even more talented author and speaker by the name of Kevin Bowser. Welcome back, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Boy, that's, uh, I wish I was half as good as you say I am. <laughs> I, I, My mother must have written this uh, script for you, apparently. <laughs> moms, are, moms are good for cheering, that's for sure. <laughs> Whether it's innate or taught, I can't, I can't debate that one. <laughs> so we, we've just ended the last segment talking very interestingly about, you know, the emotional intelligence of people being aware of surroundings. Um, you know, there, there might be a lot of listeners that are tuning in and saying, you know, maybe I do want to step outside my box and start to become a leader or have leadership qualities uh, and see how that feels and, and, and get over my fear. Um, and that's a, that's a great story about getting over fears because, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. It's how I started my authorship with a with a life coach who said i said you know i want to live my life to the fullest and he said how about today and i went no i'm not ready <laughs> <laughs> so you know if anybody wants to you know to have a powerful story and and just same for you it took uh 10 years to 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 really get your book out was that the first book that came out that's how long that that was yeah uh it sat on the shelf for a long time uh I had a very good friend, uh, uh, and he introduced me to a publisher, and he, he basically said, you know, what are you, what are you doing? You've got all this stuff inside your head. Why is it, why is it not out on paper? And he, he, he really challenged me. And, um, and, and <clears throat> I don't think of myself as an author. I, I think of myself as a speaker. I think of myself as a coach or as a consultant. And um, he, he, he made an interesting statement to me and challenged me. And he said, Kevin, if you really want to do it and you want to do it big time, he said, you need to understand – that the book is the new business card. And he said, if you want to be considered to be an expert in your field, you have to have a book. Everyone's got a business card, not everyone has a book. And he said, for you, the book is your business card. And so uh, I, I, I began started, you know, taking all that stuff that had been on my hard drive and started putting it down in such a way that it, uh, it started to, to form pretty quickly into into uh, the emotionally agile leader and it, it you know the writing part was was fairly easy it was the editing and the and all of that that was that uh, that got a little a little hard on me there you go so so let's say somebody's home saying that's it tomorrow morning i'm over the fear 
what, what are the next steps? What are the next call to action to, to start to show those, those leadership qualities? So we have, I'm going to get over my fear. I'm going to be aware of myself, self-awareness. Are there any next steps that they can start to, to form that, that newly formed leader or continue that leadership quality? Okay, so out of the book is, is coming also a workbook and, and, and some seminar materials that I'm working on. And one of the things I'm working on is a set of topic cards that help go through some basic tenets of, of the book. But on the back of every one of those topic cards is a reminder to do three things. One is identify a leader worth following. Find out how they lead. And then, you know, get them to, to mentor you, get them to show you, get them to teach you. So if you really want to do it, go find someone tomorrow. You know who they are. There's somebody you know right now that you go, man, I wish, I wish I could be like so-and-so. Well, go talk to so-and-so and tell them that. Tell them that you appreciate the leadership qualities that they have and buy them a cup of coffee and say, could you, could you sit down with me and, and, and help me uh, determine, in your opinion, what, what, fundamentals of leadership do I exhibit and and what could you help me to do to become a better leader you know there's a there's a quote that I that I go back to in the book uh, at least twice and that that our role and our function as a leader is to not make more followers it's to make more leaders and if you are a true leader that's what you're wanting to do you're wanting to make more leaders so if someone comes to you and you are that leader you you are you are morally obligated, I think, to work with that person and help them to develop their leadership skills. Fantastic. Wow. That, that's, it. that's impressive. And, and you are correct. You, there are bosses or leaders that you enjoy and you like, and you never think about just going up to them because they're, you, you know, most of the time they're wonderful people and they'd be more than happy to share how they got their journey there and, and uh, Absolutely. their life and, and uh, you know, something to, to really you know, grow inside of you fruitfully by having that information. So the last book, The Emotional Agile Leader. This is this one, man, already, you know, obviously getting rave reviews, uh, looks super interesting. Um, tell me about this, this recent book and, you know, what, what, what you, what wonderful things you've done. It's been released October, 2018. So it's really hot off the presses. It and, is, it is. Huh? It is. So I, I, okay. So this, a, a couple of years ago, I was, I was doing some coaching and consulting on, on leadership and a book just absolutely captivated me. Uh, I, I had been aware of emotional intelligence for a while. Uh, everyone has heard of Daniel Goleman and his book, emotional intelligence. It's a great book. Uh, you know, I'm a sort of a public school kid. So it's a little, it was a little academic for me. So I needed <laughs> something a little less. So the book that just captivated me was Emotional Intelligence 2.0 by Drs. Travis Bradbury and Gene Greaves. It's a much shorter book. It's much less academic. It's much more practical. And that book just captivated me. It fundamentally changed how I viewed leadership and leadership coaching. And so I, I took that and I started working those principles into my coaching and into my consulting. And I found there really wasn't a lot of stuff out there on that. It, 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 you know, the leadership has always been uh, sort of a, there's not for want of, of books out there on leadership, but they, 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 they either come at it from a, from a, a very project oriented perspective, or sometimes they come at it from a sort of a military perspective, you know, follow me and we'll charge up that hill. But I didn't, I didn't find a, a huge amount of books out there that said, that, that took it, that looked at it from the emotional intelligence perspective. And so I said, I think there's a book inside of me that takes all of this stuff that I'm doing around emotional intelligence and applies it directly to leadership and makes a leader much more, and I hate to use the word because it sometimes has a bad connotation, but much more reactive and immediately reactive such to such a point that that reaction is so quick between the action and the reaction that it becomes almost re reflex. And so as an emotional event happens, I'm able to respond with the appropriate emotion just that quick. And that's the emotionally agile part. That's getting so good at this 
that it becomes second nature and it becomes just who I am and how I lead and how I communicate. Well, some of the best leaders, it's almost as if it's in their nature. So I find it huh. super interesting that maybe it wasn't in their nature or maybe it was. That's not the point. The point is this agility is mm -hmm. making it seeming as if it's it's natural habit to them. So Correct. very very interesting. I never I never thought of it as being agile, but but uh, you know it's it's making lemons out of lemonade, you know, if you will. But doing it in a manner where it's self awareness and considering the other person or the team, so the team can produce. Am I am I correct? I think you are. That's one of the reasons I've kind of I, I I I went for an image on the cover of the book of of the big cat, right? And and. When I think of a big cat, uh, you know, that's what I think of agile. I mean, I love watching the National Geographic specials, right? And I love seeing that, that big cat uh, out on the prowl and how quickly they can turn. You know, they swing their, their tail, acts like a rudder, and it swings them, and they're able to move fast and agile. And so I, 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 I'm just captivated by that image. You know, you would think I would have opened the book with a story about that. Instead, if you've read the book, you notice I opened the story about a little rockhopper penguin. You know, and how that rock hopper penguin is a, is an analogy for leadership. Uh, maybe the penguin should have been on the front of the book. I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say, why the penguin? <laughs> that's that's very okay, interesting. So the story of the penguin is uh, again I was watching a National Geographic special, and I saw these little penguins, these little rock hopper penguins, down on the southern tip of South America. And as they migrate back at the at every year to their mating grounds, the shores that they come upon are very rocky. They're cliffs. And so they jump up onto the, out of the water onto the rocky cliffs, and the next time a wave comes, it knocks them off the cliff, and they have to go back. So what they've developed over time is a sense of when that wave is going to come. And instead of presenting their body sideways to the wave, they quickly turn and they face the wave. And that wave crashes over the front of them in a much shallower profile, and it doesn't knock them off the rock. Wonderful. And so I thought, what a great metaphor. What a great, to face the waves rather than have the wave knock you over. I turn agile and I face the wave, that emotional wave that hits me, and, I, and it doesn't knock me off the rock. So the book opens not with a story of a big cat, but with a, a little tiny rock hopper penguin in Argentina. Wonderful. Kevin, that, that's, that's awesome. So let's do this. Let's, um, let's take a break so we can continue the story of the penguin, if you will. <laughs> so Kevin, Kevin Bowser, the Emotionally Agile Leader. What would you do if you found out everyone on the town council were thieves and murderers? That's what happened in Bandera, Texas in 1873. John Cruder was the marshal, yet he needed to operate outside the law in order to balance the scales of justice. He is the Midnight Marauder. You can find his books on Amazon.com and TopWesterns.com in paperback, digital, and audio. I'm Roy Clinton, and I hope you'll read The Midnight Marauder. Indie Lector is a store for serious readers and indie authors. Find great talent at IndieLector.store and save money on books with their book club. A portion of the proceeds helps get books into schools and libraries in need. Find a great book to read by an indie author at IndieLector.store. The Holy Spirit is gifting our children and grandchildren, and they are naturally able to show God's power to the world. Amazon bestseller Ann Lynn Noble and her granddaughter Carlisle capture insights and learnings of growing spiritually through the pages of Glow and Grow in the Grace of God. This inspirational novel provides perspectives on biblical truth from a young believer and her grandmother exploring spirituality. Rekindle that childlike faith with Glow and Grow in the Grace of God. Available now on Amazon and at AnnLynnNobleAuthor.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Welcome back, y'all. This is awarded children's author, Shanalee Charbonneau, interviewing the very interesting Kevin Bowser. Welcome back, Kevin. Thanks. Glad to be here. Sure, sure. So we just finished this very interesting uh, story of a penguin. Love the analogy, got it. Uh, very helpful, thank you. We do have another question that's come out. 
Um, so, you know, we talked about leadership and, and wondering if you could take on those leadership roles. I've heard this before. Some people say you're either born with it or you aren't born with leadership qualities. So do you, do you believe that? Or especially with your focus on becoming a good leader, um, is that something you acquire or, you know, maybe some people just aren't good at it? I, I, will, I will liken it a little bit to athletics. Uh, I, uh, I had the, uh, the pleasure many years ago of coaching girls basketball. If you ever want a blessing in life, coach girls basketball. Um, <laughs> and I had a couple of girls on the team that were fairly fast. I had a couple of girls that weren't. And leadership is like speed. Uh, you know, I, a coach can't make you fast. A coach can make you faster, but a coach can't make you fast. I think that's akin to leadership. I can't make you necessarily a great leader, but I can make you a better leader. I think we all have some leadership capability within us. And I think, I think there are those that are drawn to it. And for those of us that are drawn to it, we do everything we can to enhance it, to fortify it, to, to improve it. And so I, for, the, for that leader that's, that's dipping their toe in the water, I think you need to recognize you, you have leadership ability. You do. Uh, and if you find the right mentor, uh, and you're, you're willing to work at, and you're willing to be a little self-aware, and you're willing to, to be able to entertain the difficult questions about whether or not, you know, some of the things that you're doing are working from a leadership perspective, I think you can, I think you can become a better leader. I, I don't know that you're going to be, you know, the, I don't know if you're going to someday become president of the United States or the, you know, ambassador to the UN or, or something from that perspective, CEO of a fortune five company, but, but you can become a better, you know, a better uh, husband or wife. You can become a better uh, board member on whatever civic or club organization that you serve on. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be a better husband, a better father, a better employee, a better supervisor, boss, manager. You, you'll be, you'll be better. Great advice. So just kind of wrapping it up, um, this was extremely uh, inspirational and, and amazing. So thank you, Kevin, because uh, you, you, you amazed me on the phone and you've amazed me in this arena. So thank you for that. The, uh, can you talk a little bit about your website, any places you want to be, uh, what you can, the services you offer? Sure. Uh, so if you're interested in the book, uh, the book, uh, I, did a, I did a launch site for the book, and it's uh, Emotionally Agile Leader. I think that's going to be linked to you later in the broadcast but, uh, or in the rebroadcast, but it's, it's um, EmotionallyAgileLeader.com. Uh, that's where you'll find the book, and you'll get a little trailer video on the book, and, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, you also, if you're interested in some of the things that I'm writing, I've been writing on this topic for a very long time, and, and the, the website that I do that on is sort of my personal blog on, on leadership, and it's uh, leadershipvoices.com, leadershipvoices.com. I, I, uh, all of my articles go there first, and, and just like that, that book that you mentioned earlier, that sort of the bridge book, it, it, it came out of the writings that were there. So if you want to peek at where my head is and where I'm going, that's a, that's a good place. Uh, you can find me on social media, obviously on Facebook, Twitter, and, and all of those. But if, in terms of what I offer, I think I'm fairly good sitting down across the table, kneecap to kneecap, with a cup of coffee in our hands, talking through leadership issues. Uh, as a matter of fact, I offer a six-week or six-session engagement around leadership coaching and how to become a, a better leader. And I think I, I think I do fairly well in that environment. I also do keynotes. Uh, you know, I was out in San Diego recently spoke to a, a marketing conference out there on servant leadership, which I think is an interesting topic as well. But, uh, but all of those things uh, I'm available for. If, you, if anyone would like to, uh, to reach out to me, uh, I'm easily reachable by email, kevin at leadershipvoices.com. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Well, thank you, Kevin. This is, again, Shanley Charbonneau. We have spoken to the agile leader, Kevin Bowser. <laughs> Uh, the author of the most recent release, The Emotional Agile Leader. Thank you, Kevin. You have a wonderful night and uh, God bless. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website at IndieBeacon.com.